Um, first of all, excited to be here. Thank you all for the opportunity. Um, before, I, I know some of you have heard about us, but uh, perhaps not everyone. We put together a small video uh, that I thought we'd play, just to give you like a two-minute intro to Parablo. So, do we have the video first? Can we, can we play that now? Essentially moved the digital footprint 
away from the enterprise data center into the cloud. And the other big driver has been mobility. Mobility in the, in the sense that most of us are able to do our work from anywhere. So many of you are probably still working while you're here uh, because you've got mobile devices and you don't need to be on a company network to do your jobs. You are able to do it on the public internet. So those two drivers have moved the center of gravity completely from the traditional data center into either the cloud or the user endpoint, right? And, and so that action has shifted. And what Parable does is it helps IT administrators manage that new paradigm. So what we focus on is where the data is going. We focus on the cloud and we focus on, on user endpoints. And that's what we do. Now, today, uh, even though we built several solutions, I'm going to focus specifically on backup because we have a limited amount of time. And, and honestly, it is what uh, is our most popular solution, which are the most often. And you, you, you folks already know this, uh, most likely, but enterprises you know, invest in solutions like, like uh, enterprise-grade backup for more than a simple use case. You know, the simple use case is, hey, I lost a folder, or I lost a file, I lost an email message, I need to bring it back. Obviously, there's several ways to accomplish that. A backup can obviously help you with that, but there's many other ways, you know, even utilities like a OneDrive or a Google Drive, or even going through emails and searching for an old attachment might be able to help you out in that kind of scenario. But the reason enterprises invest in commercial grade solutions like ours is for several other reasons beyond that basic use case. Many times there is a regulatory need. Companies may need to keep data or retain data for specific periods of time, and they may have to prove that to a regulator on a quarterly basis or an annual basis. And lack and, and uh, non-compliance can actually uh, lead to penalties that are pretty severe, and regulations are getting stricter you know, as time goes on. Uh, the other reason enterprises invest in backup software is it's a great way to recover from ransomware. Uh, right? So uh, we talked about ransomware uh, even yesterday. I think the gentleman who was up here from Sokos talked about it. But the reality is that ransomware can and has managed to get through some of the best security defenses. Even every day you hear about a ransomware attack. And in 2020, we expect ransomware attacks to change their form in that they are going to become more targeted. So in the, rather than do a, you know, throw, throw the malware at the wall and see what sticks, uh, attackers are starting to get much more specific about who they're going after. So these will be targeted attacks that go after specific companies which the view is vulnerable and who are more likely to pay a ransom, right? And the best defense against ransomware you know, is honestly to have a secure backup. So you can get back up and running uh, and not be held hostage uh, by the attacker. Um, and interestingly, the, the one other driver that we see is, is inside of threats, all right? So these could be um, trusted actors inside your organization, right? These are people with privileges, elevated privileges in some cases, who are able to cause damage. Sometimes the damage is accidental, but sometimes it can be malicious. It could be retaliation from an unhappy employee. It could be somebody who's leaving the organization that's bent on causing harm or causing damage to the company. And in such cases also, a backup will be able to help to recover any damage that they cause. Right? Um, we, the, 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 the product that we have is, is called Blue Vault, right? I mean, that, that is the backup solution. It comes in two flavors. Um, I talked about how we focus on the cloud and how we focus on endpoints. Uh, Blue Vault for endpoints uh, is what I'm going to talk about first, and then we'll also talk about Blue Vault for the cloud. Uh, Blue Vault is fundamentally uh, built for scale, right? This is an enterprise grade solution, so we expect it to work when you have tens of thousands of employees. It'll work even if you have 50 employees. You know, it'll work inside a small office as well. But fundamentally, it is geared to work in scale. It's a very modular solution. You can, you can deploy it across geographies, uh, no matter how widespread your user base is. Our largest customer has over 10,000 users, and they, they have uh, you know, people using the software on pretty much every continent, but they manage everything out of one console. Right? So, so it's a very powerful solution that way. Uh, it's fully integrated with AD, or Azure AD, et cetera. Uh, uh, it, it's also easy for end users to use. At the end, at the end of the day, it's an end user focused solution. So the people should be able to recover their own data you know, without having to call in a support ticket or call into IT for it. Um, enterprise class features, I mean, we can go toe to toe with most of the large vendors out there, in fact, all of them. 
whether it is CPU throttling, you know, network bandwidth management, compression, deduplication, uh, being able to do data incrementals or partial file transfers. This is particularly useful when you have very large files, you know, like PSTs. Um, rather than move that data into the cloud every day for a backup, you know, you can be smart and look only for the pieces that have changed and just, you know, pick those pieces up for backup. So we can do a number of these things. But what really sets us apart is this integration that we've built with Office 365, right? And, and many of you probably have customers uh, that have Office 365 or intersect greatly, you know, with the, with the Office 365 user base. Office 365 is now the largest SaaS solution out there. Probably has over 250 million seats, uh, right? And, and we run into customers with Office 365 pretty much every day, right? And, and the, the attached we've built with Office 365 is really, really compelling in the sense that if you think about Office 365 and what Microsoft sells as part of that suite, you essentially got uh, you know, Exchange, which is, which is email, uh, you've got SharePoint, you've got you know, Link and Skype and so many other things, Teams, but they also give you one drive for business, you know, in the form of cloud storage. And it's a, it's a very generous allocation. It's uh, like, to start with, it's about one terabyte per user. I mean, just like that number sink in, that is a lot of storage for a single user to have. And you multiply that across the organization, and you, have, you think of an organization with a, with a thousand users, right there you're looking at a petabyte of storage. And the interesting thing is, users of Office 365 hardly uh, scratch the surface as far as OneDrive usage. Very, very little OneDrive is actually consumed, which means that most of these companies are sitting with a lot of unused OneDrive storage that they have at their disposal. And one of the things we've done at Parablu is we've built this very innovative integration with OneDrive, you know, where we can take the unused storage allocation that is spread out across the users and essentially create a single manageable, uh, centrally manageable uh, target you know, for backups. So the backup data that is coming from the endpoints, rather than have it go to a storage target in the cloud, somewhere else like in Azure or Amazon, or even to local desk like NAS or SanDisk, can instead be sent to the secure OneDrive container that we create. And essentially, we, even though OneDrive is an is a end user controlled application, what we do is we take that storage and we create a secure container out of it, which makes it just as solid as any other backup target. So this is an immutable copy that we created there where users cannot go and tamper with the data. They cannot go delete it. They cannot, they cannot remove it. Uh, it's essentially invisible to them unless they come in through our interface to do a, a recovery or restore. It's a very powerful solution. It is, uh, it, it is something that uh, many, many, many customers have found compelling. And in fact, we've been able to displace a lot of existing incumbent vendors, uh, you know, because of the benefits we provide with this. Okay. Now, one of the things we take very what this is, uh, by the way, explaining is uh, essentially what I said in words in the previous slide. So, if you think of the the blue cloud as being your one right for business uh, target or your one right for business storage allocation, you can think of the white cloud inside as being you know the secure container that we create. Right, so data flows from the endpoints, goes through our, uh, our cloud gateway, gets encrypted, gets into the secure container. The white cloud is invisible to the end users, right? So they will only see the files and folders that they upload and download into the blue cloud, which is their regular OneDrive. They don't see the backup data. The backup data can get managed centrally, you know, from, uh, from by, the center, by the administrator. So it's a, it's, it's a pretty powerful way of giving back to the enterprise you know, what is rightfully theirs and something they've already paid for. Now, one of the things we, we take super seriously is security, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so, we, when we put data in the cloud, every, everything that we process essentially gets encrypted. And not only that, we, we let the user control the encryption uh, keys. When I say the user, the enterprise. So, the enterprise is in, uh, it can change their encryption keys at any point. So th this essentially gives them zero knowledge privacy, which means that they, they can be secure in the knowledge that their data is safe in the cloud, knowing that nobody else has access to it. Not the cloud vendor, not us as a software vendor, not a partner, nobody really other than themselves, right? 
Now, we also use several other techniques to ensure that the data remains secure in the cloud. Uh, we use a technique called file shredding, which means that we can take a, a single file, we decompose that into smaller pieces, right? And for instance, a large PSD can get decomposed into like 10 or 20,000 little chunks, and each of them will get encrypted separately in the cloud, essentially creating like a digital jigsaw that no unauthorized user can you know, even think of starting to put together. Unless they're authorized, they're coming through our software, they'll not be able to recover or, or make any sense out of that data. Uh, we also obfuscate out all file names and folder names completely. So even if somebody went and gained access to the secure container and tried to look inside, none of the data would make any sense to them, not, not even to an administrator inside the company. Uh, this is just a, a, a list of some of the customers that already use our software. Many of them use um, you know, our OneDrive technology. Uh, some of them uh, use uh, Azure. Uh, some of them use Google Drive. Uh, some of them have also implemented on-premise. But most certainly, the OneDrive advantage is something that has worked in our favor, and a large majority of them do use OneDrive. And I also talked about you know, displacements we've made, and we've done that on more than one occasion. Some of the names here you probably recognize from the competitors list. Uh, I'm sure some of them you, you guys also do business with. But this is more to show that we can go toe to toe with very good, many of them are good products. I mean, this is not a, a thing against any one of them. But we have an advantage that is very compelling, that is convincing customers to switch. Now, the other thing I really wanted to talk about today was the other variant, right? So what I talked about until now was our solution for endpoints. We similarly can protect data in the cloud. So the users, the same Office 365 users we're talking about also have data in the form of mails and exchange, in the form of documents in SharePoint, in the form of files in OneDrive. And we can also make a safe copy of that data for them in an alternate cloud. Now, the, why is this important? Uh, many, many times people do ask, you know, if I have data in the cloud, do I really need to do a backup again, uh, right? And, and the answer is, is yes, uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, the answer is yes. And, and the answer lies in the fact that there is something called a shared responsibility model. And you will find this with Microsoft, you'll find this with Amazon, you'll find this with really any cloud vendor. But there's a very clear line the, uh, the cloud vendor draws between where their responsibility starts and ends and where your responsibility starts and ends as a, as a customer. That is right. So while uh, cloud vendors do take responsibility for certain things like infrastructure, like uptime, network availability, and to some degree, you know, some degree of security, uh, they do not take responsibility for uh, your data. Uh, at the end of the day, it is your data as a customer and you're responsible for it. You cannot contract away that responsibility. You're still answerable to, uh, uh, to regulators, you're still answerable to your users, your customers, or anybody really, because it's your data. Uh, now, do, does, does the cloud vendor do backups? Does Office 365 do backups? They actually, what they do is actually replicate, right? So they will replicate their data, you know, they'll tell you to three different data centers, etc. And that is 100% true. But you have to remember, their motivation for doing that is to ensure uptime. So they want to make sure that your tenant or a customer's tenant stays up, you know, for as long uh, or uh, as much as possible. They promise you 99.9999, etc. They want to keep up that number, and that's the reason that those replications happen. But if you lose a folder, if you lose a, an email, or you lose uh, data that, that uh, an end user has deleted, they are not really going to go and try and get the data back for you. They'll point you to the recycle bin, you know, which, which has got a limited amount of storage, and, and that is their recovery strategy. So if you want, if you want retention and you want to be regulatory compliant, regulatory compliant, you have to look at a solution like ours, right? So in any case, so I think I think uh, this this point is made. Uh, one other last thing I leave you with, and this is this is a very unique uh, feature, uh, especially because of the integration we've done with OneDrive, is we can also perform archiving out of your Exchange mailboxes. So for those of you who are familiar with the O365 licensing model, you will you will realize there's several license levels, right? So if you're at an E1 license or a, or a lower license level, you have a limited mailbox size, and it's usually about 50 GB. Uh, 
Uh, and once you reach that threshold, or once a user reaches that threshold, they have to now figure out what they do with the older email. So do you pay Microsoft to archive it, or do you go, you know, keep it in a, a PST file again, you know, which is what we were trying to avoid in the first place. And we have this unique uh, ability to integrate with OneDrive. So you've got this one terabyte of space in OneDrive. Why not use that as space to keep your Exchange archive? So what we can do with this technology is essentially give users a bottomless mailbox, an unlimited mailbox size. So the old emails continue to get stored in Office 365. It's a fully searchable archive. They can go find any email at any time that they want from the past and keep deleting you know, older emails out of their active mailbox. So this is a, and they don't have to pay anything extra for storage because we're essentially using, you know, the OneDrive storage that they have. All right, so I kind I, I, I will stop here. I, I think I'm running out of time. Uh, but uh, I just uh, wanted to say, leave you with one thought. If you, if you see Office 365, think of us. Uh, the, the alignment is huge. And we'll most likely be able to provide a much better solution uh, for your customers than, than pretty much any of the competition. All right. I'm around for the next couple of days, so I'd love to continue this conversation with you guys. So you know, feel free to just stop, stop, or stop, out, uh, stop, and reach out to me uh, if you if you want to speak or if you want to learn more about Pavel. Thanks again, all of you, for your time. Really appreciate it.